This is Unit Zero, and in this video we are going to be discussing deck building with Pool 3 cards in Marvel Snap. For those that don't know, once your collection level in Marvel Snap reaches 486, you have a 25% chance to pull from the third pool of cards when you open the collector's reserve. Pool 3 contains some very powerful and some not so powerful cards. I see new players often ask, I pulled cards A, B, and C, how can I build a deck around these? If you're just entering Pool 3, the short answer is, you're probably not going to be able to unless you've been extremely lucky. But we'll discuss which cards unlock new archetypes and some key synergies and uses for all the Pool 3 cards that are currently in the game. I've organized each of the cards in Pool 3 according to their use. As a disclaimer, this is not a tier list to determine how strong a card is. My goal here is to provide you with an idea of how useful your new pool 3 cards are and how you may best use them in deck building. I also won't be going over specific deck lists, since if you're watching this video, you're unlikely to have a full collection anyway. There's going to be a lot of improvisation going on with your deck building, so I'll try to give general guidelines for what kind of cards synergize well with each of your pool 3 cards. And in many cases, you may not be able to use your new shiny toys until your collection is much larger. But feel free to experiment. Marvel Snap is not the type of game where you have to run specific deck lists to be competitive. If you play well, you can run a large variety of different cards to climb the ladder to infinite. Not every card in your deck has to synergize with the others. You can just run collections of good cards and some small packages of cards that have synergies with one or two other cards in your deck and you'll be just fine. The first group of cards are what I call the archetype defining cards. These cards are often the pivotal cards in their decks and have entire archetypes named after them. The first card is Sarah. Many consider her the best card in the game at the moment. Her effect is very powerful when used in conjunction with strong 2 and 3 drops late in the game. If you can cheat her out before turn 5 with cards like Psylocke or Jubilee, you're going to be in a very strong position to win your match. There are so many lists that utilize Sarah, but my favorite uses cards like Mysterio, Mojo, and Maximus, along with tech cards like Shang-Chi, Enchantress, and or Killmonger to swing the board in your favor on the last turn. Deck building with Sarah is very flexible, and even if your collection is not very big, you're likely to be able to make a pretty strong list with just pool 1 and 2 cards like Angela, Bishop, and Killmonger. If you're lucky enough to pull her early, feel free to improvise with your list and substitute stronger cards as you unlock them. The next card on the list is Destroyer. This card is very popular at the moment on the ladder and is used in a few different types of decks. The most popular list uses cards like Armor, Cosmo, and Professor X to protect your other cards from Destroyer's unreveal effect. And Spectrum can also be used as an alternate win condition if you're running a lot of ongoing cards. I've also used Destroyer along with Electro pretty successfully, but I'll discuss that in a bit. Next up is Death. She has a very powerful effect that synergizes well with Destroy effects to lower her cost. One of the most powerful decks right now pairs her with a turn 5 wave, which allows you to play a cheap or even a free Death on turn 6 along with another big card while your opponent can usually play only one card. While you really need Wave to make the deck work, Death is still powerful in your own right, albeit less consistent since you need to destroy many more cards during the game to get her on board. She also has some uses in discard decks as a big body and a target for discard with Lady Sif. Next we have Lockjaw, which is one of my favorite cards at the moment. There are a few different types of decks that use Lockjaw, but you generally want to build a deck with some very cheap cards to throw into your Lockjaw lane, and some very big cards to pull out of your deck. Cheap cards like Wasp and Thor's Mjolnir are probably the best cards to throw into Lockjaw, but the card's fairly flexible. If you have them, feel free to experiment with some strong 0, 1, and 2 drops, combined with whatever 5 and 6 cost cards you may have in your collection. Next card is Electro, which allows you to get out some very powerful cards a turn earlier than your opponent. Cards like Professor X and strong 6 drops like Giganto, Magneto, Odin, Doctor Doom, etc. are all great to put in your Electro deck. Uh, Electro is pretty flexible. You can just include some very strong late game plays to make the most of your extra energy. And some people will even run Electro with uh, Lockjaw, Enchantress, or Viper to negate Electro's ongoing effect, so you can be able to play more than one card in the turn. Our next card is Patriot. Um, and Patriot turns a lot of your really bad vanilla cards and tokens into very strong cards. Building with Patriot is pretty straightforward. There's all the cards with no effects like Misty Knight, Shocker, Cyclops, as well as cards that produce tokens like Squirrel Girl, Mr. Sinister, and Brood all have very strong synergy with Patriot. Some other cards people like running with Patriot include Kazar and Ultron if you have them, Blue Marvel, and of course Mystique and Onslaught to amplify his effect. If you're playing Patriot, just hope you don't run into Enchantress. <laughs> Wong, which doubles on reveal effects, allows for a lot of interesting combos with strong on reveal cards like White Tiger and Black Panther. Building decks with Wong is pretty straightforward as well. 
And there's some really wacky game-breaking combos you can pull off with cards like Ironheart, Hazmat, Gambit. And if you can even manage to get out Onslaught, Mystique, and Wong all in the same lane, you're going to be in for some crazy shenanigans. Even if you don't have all these cards, you can just slot in Wong into the starter unreveal deck and it'll make it much stronger. Our next card, Mr. Negative, enables a fun archetype that used to be quite strong and is still not too bad in my opinion, even if it's quite inconsistent. With Mr. Negative's effect, you want to include cards with low power, but powerful effects like Iron Man, Mystique, Arnim Zola, White Tiger, Blue Marvel, etc. Some people also run Sarah in their Mr. Negative list to enable even more powerful late game turns. You can include cards like Psylocke and Jubilee to try to get Mr. Negative on the board as soon as possible. Next up is Hela, which also used in a pretty straightforward deck. You include a lot of discard cards like Blade, Swordmaster, Hellcow, along with large powerful cards that can be brought back on the last turn with Hella's effect. You can also pair it with Invisible Woman and hide your discard cards in that lane to prevent you from discarding Hella before turn 6. This deck is pretty inconsistent, but can be fun to play if that's your thing. The next two cards kind of go together to enable the bounce deck archetype. Beast and Falcon are both able to return cards to your hand, so you can build a deck with some strong 1 and 2 drops like Korg, Iceman, Angela, etc. And use cards like the Collector that synergize with these bounce to hand mechanics. If you have the Hood, it's also another great card to include in this deck. Agatha is probably one of the most unique cards in the game, as she plays the game for you while she is in your hand. Agatha decks use Lady Sif and Wave to get her out of, out of your hand early so that you can regain control of the game. Why would anyone play this card at all? There's a few things. Having Agatha in your deck allows you to start with one extra card in your hand at the beginning of the game, and she's also a good target to bring back with Ghost Rider if you manage to discard Agatha from your hand on turn 3 with Lady Sif. But ultimately, you play Agatha to exchange some possibly terrible turn 1 and through 3 plays in exchange for one card advantage and possibly some tempo later in the game. There's also a small added bonus in that you may be able to confuse your opponent, as Agatha makes some seriously head-scratching plays sometimes. The last card in our first group is Cerebro. Its effect of buffing the highest power cards on your board means you want to include cards that all have the same power to maximize the value of Cerebro. There are a lot of different lists that try to make Cerebro work, but the most popular are probably the ones that use 2 and 3 power cards. Mystique is a great addition to the deck, as a turn 6 Cerebro-Mystique combo can catch your opponent off guard if they haven't already figured out your game plan by then. So from here on, we'll move on a little quicker, and I won't go into too much detail for each card as they often have multiple uses and aren't pigeonholed into a specific deck or archetype. Our next group of cards are cards that fit into many different types of decks and are just good cards in general. Daredevil, Leader, Wave, Arrow are all very powerful cards to include in a deck. Wave can be paired with Death, as we discussed earlier, to create one of the most powerful decks in the game. And you can use her as well in any deck that wants to get out some strong 5 or 6 drops early. Arrow and Leader are both great at closing out games that you have already winning. If you're winning 2 lanes, you can often arrow into the 3rd lane to make sure your opponent can't flip the other 2 lanes in your favor on the last turn. Mystique we've already mentioned a bit, but she obviously synergizes with any card that has a strong ongoing effect. In addition to what we've already mentioned, cards like Devil Dinosaur, Iron Man are great Mystique targets, and everyone should have those in their collections at this point. Green Goblin, Magneto, The Hood, Captain Marvel, Doctor Doom, these are all just good cards in general as well. Hood has some synergies with destroy effects that can remove the first part of the card from the board while still being able to play out the demon later on. And some people also run Doctor Doom in Patriot lists. Next card, Taskmaster, is great if you have large cards that you can get on the board before turn 6 and then copy the stats with Taskmaster. Cards like Devil Dinosaur and Venom can be prime Taskmaster targets, as there are only 6 drops that you can play early with Wave, uh, Psylocke, or Electro. Spider-Man and Juggernaut are interesting tech cards that can affect your opponent's lanes. Juggernaut used to be pretty popular to play after Storm, but most good decks these days have ways of getting to locked out lanes. So the 5 power you get from playing just Storm and Juggernaut is not always enough to win that lane. Spider-Man has a really interesting effect and can be used to shut your opponent out of a lane if played on turn 5, or even make your opponent skip a turn if played on a location like Avengers Compound on turn 4. If you can shut your opponent out of two locations, either through luck, RNG, or using cards like Storm, Spider-Man can almost guarantee you the win if you play it on the third location on turn 5, since your opponent will no longer be able to play any cards on turn 6. Mojo, Maximus, and Mysterio all have great stats for their cost, and can synergize well with a lot of different types of decks. I've used them all in Sarah decks to some success, 
Maximus is usually played on the last turn when his honor reveal effect doesn't matter, or if you have some way of blocking it, like with Cosmo. And he also has synergy with cards like Ronin. Mysterio takes up three spots on the board, but he works very well with cards like Bishop, which uh, Mysterio will proc Bishop's effect three times, and even Lockjaw, as his clones can proc Lockjaw's effect as well. You can also run Mysterio in decks with destroy effects to remove the fake Mysterios from your lanes. Thor is a decent card that, as we mentioned before, works well with Lockjaw, as you can use a zero cost hammer to feed the doggo and possibly play the hammer multiple times throughout the game to really buff up your Thor. He obviously also pairs well with Jane Foster Thor, who we'll get to in a minute. Polaris is a fairly well stated card with an interesting effect. She works well in disruption type decks or in decks that just want to run well stated cards. She can usually pull over a card to fill up one of your opponent's lanes as well. Psylocke we've mentioned a number of times already, and you want to run her to get out some key cards like Sarah and Mr. Negative to turn earlier. Giganto is just a huge card with a, and one of the most powerful standalone cards in the game. He comes with a drawback that you can only play him in the left lane, but that's not always a drawback if you plan for it. Also, any deck that can cheat out multiple powerful minions can make, certainly make use of a 14 power body pretty well. Rescue is another decent card that can turn into a 9 power card if you play her into, into her lane on the next turn. The biggest downside here is that you often may be committing too much to one lane. You can mitigate this drawback a bit by playing cards like Vision or Captain Marvel uh, that can move to other lanes later in the game to better distribute your power over the three lanes. Our next group of cards are situational cards. These cards are not necessarily weaker than those in the previous groups, but are a little less flexible. The first card in this group is Magic. She used to be one of the strongest cards in the game, but Second Dinner made it so you can no longer play her on turn 6. After this nerf, she isn't played nearly as much, but some decks still use her such as combo decks, or decks like Sarah and Mr. Negative, where you can make use of the extra turn to really have more powerful late game plays. Wasp is an interesting card just because it costs zero energy cost. It's really only seen in Lockjaw and Patriot decks at the moment, but if you've played other card games in the past, you know that zero cost cards can always have a chance to be broken later on if they introduce other cards that synergize well with Wasp. Dracula is another very strong card, but is currently limited to decks with discard effects such as Apocalypse, or decks that have lower curves where you can target the discard to one or two large minions at the end of the game. America Chavez is often a decent card to run with Dracula, since if you have a pretty low curve, you can dump all your cards except for Chavez and maybe one other big card on last turn, and then you have some flexibility on which of your six drops you want Dracula to discard at the end of the game. The next card, Rogue, is a card with a very powerful effect and one of the hardest counters to cards like Devil Dinosaur and Iron Man at the moment. Unless you're running into a lot of players that run cards like Devil Dino and Iron Man, it may be hard to find a spot for, for her in your deck though. The next few cards have synergies with each other. Arnim Zola is running decks where you can get out pretty big minion on turn 5 that you then want to copy in, into the other lanes. Black Panther, sometimes combined with Wong and Venom, are prime Arnim Zola targets. As Black Panther is the game's newest card, people have been experimenting with that combo. And it's, while it's flashy, it can be a bit consistent and easy to read, but feel free to play around with it if you want. You can certainly win a few games with that combo. The next card, Ronin, has a pretty strong effect as well, but is really bad if you're facing aggressive decks that play out a majority of their cards. As mentioned before, he has some synergy with Maximus. Deadpool is a decent card, but he needs quite a bit of support to make him work. Obviously, any destroy card works well here, as are any cards that buff single targets, like Forge and Hulkbuster. Dr. Octopus is a really interesting card with a unique effect, but it's really difficult to use in my experience. He's generally a really high variance card that can sometimes immediately win or lose you the game. You should consider playing him with Cosmo if you just want the stats without the variance of his effect. Our next few cards, Debris, Black Widow, Rockslide, and Viper, are all decent cards to add to a disruption style deck but they're not too powerful on their own. You need generally need a bunch of these disruption cards packaged together to really mess with your opponent. Debris has some additional synergy with cards like Kazar, Blue Marvel, and Patriot. Hellcow and Ghost Rider are obviously just running discard decks, while Ghost Rider can be paired with Lady Sif in any deck that wants to cheat out big minions 
This combo used to be a lot more prevalent before Lady Sif was nerfed from 2 to 3, two to three energy though. Jane Foster we've already mentioned uh, is a good complement for Thor, but she also has some synergy with Mr. Negative where you can use her after playing Mr. Negative to draw the flip zero power cards like Iron Man from your deck. Quake is another card with a really unique but niche effect. She can become a pretty good addition to your deck when there's a hot location that you want to move around and can really screw with your opponent. Uh, one example that comes to mind is the Nexus, where oftentimes uh, your opponent will be playing into concentrating their power in one lane, and then if you use Quake after they've already committed to that lane, it can really disrupt their game plan. Goose is another disruption style card that can be used with lower curve decks to limit your opponent's plays. It's not all that strong, but can be paired with strong 2 or 3 drops later to win that lane, especially if your opponent is playing generally big or high cost minions. Gamut has synergy with discard decks as well as on reveal decks, but it's generally a little bit too RNG dependent to see widespread play. It is a fun card though. Miles Morales is a great card if you can trigger his effect. There aren't a whole lot of ways to do so at the moment. Uh, Nightcrawler and Iron Fist are probably the only ways to do it consistently outside of dedicated move decks, while cards like Arrow and Juggernaut can sometimes work, but it's not super consistent at the moment. Maybe later on when Second Dinner adds more support for Miles Morales, he can be a really good card in the meta. Drax is the only Guardian of the Galaxy in Pool 3, but that doesn't mean he's good. He can be run with Storm, but generally Jessica Jones is a better option in that situation. So while Drax is not terrible, I think there are generally better cards to be played in most of the situations where you'd want to play a 4-drop here. Our next group of cards are very niche cards that only fit into very specific type of the decks or have very niche effects that don't see a ton of play. Human Torch, for instance, is really only seen in two decks, Move Decks and the Bounce Deck that also runs Iron Fist. Colleen Wing, Black Cat, Moon Knight, see some play in discard style decks. Colleen Wing is usually used to discard, uh, target discards like Swarm, while Black Cat can be brought back in like Hello decks, for instance. Moon Knight has a really interesting effect that is potentially disruptive to your opponent's game plan, but generally considered one of the weaker discard cards because Swordmaster also exists and he has double the stats on Moon Knight. Many have tried to make Kingpin work, but he's generally pretty mediocre at best. You may be tempted to pair him with Arrow or Juggernaut, but this combo is usually easy to play around unless you're able to play both cards on the last turn with aid of cards like Sarah. His best use is probably to make your opponent play into his lane so as to prevent you from activating his effect on turn 6. He's generally too inconsistent to see regular play though. Zero, Red Skull, and Typhoid Mary are all seen in one type of deck along with Enchantress that runs aggressively statted minions with some drawbacks that can be deactivated with Zero and the Enchantress. This deck can also run Venom and Taskmaster, but in my opinion there are better decks that are just better at cheating out big stats. Invisible Woman is most widely seen in Hello decks, as we previously mentioned. She also has some applications in Wong decks or Patriot decks to protect those cards somewhat against cards like Enchantress, but it's a pretty niche use case. Quinjet is a card that may initially sound very strong as any energy reduction effects have potential to be broken, but there aren't too many applications for Quinjet at the moment. Anything that adds cards to your hand like Agent 13, Sentinel, or Moon Girl can utilize this effect, but they generally aren't super strong. Second Dinner has announced um, some new cards like uh, Agent Coulson that will be synergizing a little bit with Quinjet, but we have yet to see if uh, that'll make the card any better. Yellow Jacket is an interesting card, but isn't as good as Wisp, for instance, to pair with Lockjaw. I've seen some people use Adam Warlock in combination with Yellow Jacket to try to get the draw engine going early, but that's pretty inconsistent. Adam Warlock is interesting as it's one of the only cards with draw mechanics in the game at the moment. You can run him in decks that need to draw a key card like uh, Sarah or Mr. Negative, but it's generally hard to get his effect off consistently since you're investing 2 mana for 0 power, and then once you have him on the board your opponent has a strong incentive to play into that lane and contest to you there. You can try out a Warlock in combo decks or decks that really need to draw specific cards, but it's usually difficult to make him work. Hazmat is another really niche card that's interesting in disruption decks, 
where you're giving your opponent a bunch of things that fill their board, like Black Widow or the Goblins. Hazmat can also be run in a Wong combo deck, but generally also falls into a really inconsistent category. Uh, it's of note that um, Colossus has really good synergy with Hazmat if you're playing the combo style variety, as Colossus cannot, Colossus's power cannot be reduced by Hazmat's effect. Ultron, our next card, really only sees play in some Patriot decks at the moment. If you also run uh, Kazar and Blue Marvel, for instance, the 1-1s one that Ultron generates can be hard to beat at the end of the game, especially if there are locations that prevent players from playing into that, or if you lock them out with a card like Storm. Brood is another card that works well with Patriot. Also has some synergy with buffing cards like Forge, Nakia, Okoye, but this strategy is generally not that great at the moment, and I think that there are more powerful, more consistent strategies in the game at the moment. Crossbones is an aggressively statted 4-drop, but his drawback makes him very hard to play. Compare him to Jessica Jones or Rescue in the 4 slot, and it's pretty obvious you're probably better off playing something else. Omega Red is another card with a unique effect, but it's really hard to make work with too much investment and too little payout. Ben Brode, one of the head game developers over at Second Dinner, has recently discussed an Omega Red deck that he enjoys playing. Even if it may not be the strongest, most consistent deck out there, feel free to try it out. If Ben Brode says it's fun, it's probably probably at least a little entertaining. Just may not win you the most games. Our last card in this group is Dagger. She's a pretty high variance card in my opinion. Obviously she slots well into move decks, where she can sometimes end up being 10 or more power, but it's often really hard to set up compared to some of the other move cards. She can win you some games, but you also may lose a lot more trying to get her to work. Our last group of cards are the Sorry You Pulled These cards. As you may guess, these cards are just really never played and have no real use at the moment. Even worse than some of the most niche cards that I mentioned in the previous categories, these cards just don't have much going for them at all. Their effects are generally pretty underwhelming for their costs and stats, and there's going to be a lot better things that you could be playing. I'd like to see these cards get reworked or buffed at some point, but as of now these cards are going to just be gathering dust in your collection. Just move on and hope for better RNG on your next card pulls, or hope Second Dinner buffs them at some point in the future. And that's all for our Pool 3 guide. Hopefully you have some idea of how to best utilize these cards if you've pulled them, or for when you pull them in the future. As new cards are introduced and developers may change some of these cards from time to time for balance or design reasons, obviously our opinions of the cards may change. But if you only have a handful of pull 3 cards for which you have no use at the moment, don't worry. Filling out your collection in Marvel Snap is indeed a bit of a grind, but it's the only way to open up new decks and strategies in the long run. If there's a specific card you really want, Second Dinner has just announced a way to target new cards in the future through a mechanic called Collector's Tokens. But until that is implemented, everything is kind of up to RNG. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions or think I've missed any key points. You can also come find me on Twitch if you want to see the cards in action and discuss deck building strategies. I've also included a link to the description with some deck lists that I've been running throughout my Marvel Snap journey, so feel free to check those out as well. Especially if you're looking for something specific to play and have a pretty large collection. If you're new here, consider subscribing as I plan to post more Marvel Snap content regularly. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.